here is my JIRA, uh, JIRA instance, and you'll see at the top here, because it's the new, it's now, it used to be called portfolio, it's now called plans. Now I'm doing this in the server version. Um, everything I'm gonna show you is applicable to the cloud version as well. Once you're in the tool, it's the same. So I've got my 2020 roadmap here. This is, uh, for those who haven't seen it, this is version three, the new interface. Uh, and I'll talk you through what we're looking at here. I've already created uh, this particular roadmap. Um, just to give you a little peek behind the curtains, I can show you that this roadmap it's got two teams in it. I've got my iOS app team and I've linked their scrum board. And I've got my Android app team and I've linked their board as well. So I've got two teams here and this is what I'm looking at. And you'll see advanced roadmaps. I've just got three tabs, roadmap, teams and releases. Now, if you think about it, that's my scope of work. These are the people who are doing the work. That's my iOS app team. They've got a velocity of uh, 35. They've got a velocity of 30 from my Android app team. And releases is just really a point in time. So it's really our iron triangle of planning here. These are the three levers I have. And I go into each tab and I put in the settings that I have about my teams and how we work. And portfolio will then display visually how we're getting on. Now you see underneath, I've got a hierarchy. This is the first decision you're gonna to have to make. Advanced roadmaps allows us to create additional levels of hierarchy above Epic. So native Jira out the box or in the cloud has got stories and tasks and bugs and they can roll up to a parent Epic. Well, we can now actually define higher levels of hierarchy. And what I've done is if I just show you in the back end here, this is an admin setting. So things to be aware of, it's a global setting. So it will apply to everyone that's using your instance of Jira. I've created an issue type called initiative. You might have feature there, for example. Uh, and what I've done is I've linked it to the initiative hierarchy type. So that's been set up. So now Jira and portfolio or advanced roadmaps know that epics roll up to initiatives. And that's super useful for me because I can now actually, these are my initiatives, I can expand them out and see the epics that are underneath there. And then I can expand it out and see the stories and actually see that kind of end to end trail from a large piece of work into the epic stories and even down to the subtasks underneath. So I can actually see all my work in context for once, which is really useful for me. Now, my top tip here, um, there is sometimes a, a desire to create three, four, five levels of hierarchy and have all these different tiers you can look at. Keep it simple, use one. <laughs> one will be plenty to get started. You can add another one later. There's occasionally a use case for two, but most of the time just start with one. There's other ways of getting reporting at these big levels. If you want to start slicing your data by theme or by product, for example, there's other better ways of doing it without muddying the waters and convoluting your hierarchy in, in JIRA. So um, what I'm looking at here, this is what's called the roadmap view, and this is where you spend most of your time. So I've got my the initiatives from both of my projects that I was uh, that are in the, this plan that I talked about. Um, and over on the right hand side, I can basically see this visualization I got gets a timeline of when they're going to start and when they're going to finish. I've also got the start target start and target end date here. Now these start and end dates are native in Jira, so you can see them in the issue themselves. And if you've already got dates that you're using, maybe due date or uh, scheduled start date or something, you can configure portfolio to use those dates instead. If not, it uses the target ones straight out the bat. And what I can do is literally drag and drop my work and say how long it's going to be. I can drag and drop up there. I can move the whole bar up and down and I can actually reorder the work here as on the backlog. So we can reprioritize things and we can drag and drop the start and end dates, which is really, really useful. I can also set up my view here to make sure I'm looking at everything I need. So you can see I've got the progress column here. This is something else that's super useful. I can actually get a view of rolled up progress at the initiative level. And that's just saying it knows that epics and stories are smaller and it rolls them up and it gives me a view of how we're tracking. So that in itself is really useful for us. It saves me having to go and ask the individual teams who are working these epics where they're at and then kind of cobble together some kind of report to put it together. There's a whole host of other columns you can add on here. Um, I'm gonna add on the story points uh, column. And what you'll see is 
I can actually see the story points there. Uh, my next sort of tip for configuring your views is to make sure that in the view settings, you turn on the roll up of dates and everything else. And what that will do is, in the same way as progress, it will roll up and tell you how big this large piece of work is as a, an amalgamation of all the work, all the children work that's underneath it, which is again, really useful to kind of get an appreciation when you're prioritizing at this level, how much work there is uh, to do and how much has been left to do. Um, and this is using portfolio for this as a purely a way of just visualizing your work, taking the work from your team's boards and showing it in a visual way and allowing you to see rolled up progress and rolled up estimation. That's like our first use case. I've not even started using it properly yet, but I'm already getting value where I can see this work at a higher level that spans multiple teams or multiple projects.